carrying us through this day and this week. We ask that you send your Holy Spirit to keep us going in the right direction in this movement. It is so great. It is so nice, and we're learning. We ask a special prayer for all of our elders and leaders that are trying to focus and trying to bring us the word. Pray that they don't stress about things. We want to ask this all in your son's precious, precious name. Amen. Amen. Okay, what do you want us to do? Same thing. Yes. I don't know. Finish reading chapter two. Should we go to chapter three, no? Yes, yeah, say that louder though, so everyone can hear you. Ah, oh, it's after Daniel, right? The forgetting. Yeah. Okay, so uh, we're go we're going through Hosea. Hopefully, we can finish chapter two and then do chapter three, even though it's not the best completed study, but at least to get an idea. So please remember, is everybody's study, and. Uh, we all need to participate and think about it because this is our parable exercise. So Adriana, you wanna read chapter two? Oh, uh, <laughs> I don't know where we left off. Um, you lost. I it's 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 somewhere here. Um, should we just read the whole of chapter two? I could do it. Well. Okay. Well, Adriana is setting up. Yeah. Let me hit share. Hold on. Oh, no, you share, but I'll just read. Yeah. Okay. Chapter 2. This is 2.1 of Hosea. Say, you want to, um, say ye unto your brethren, Ami, and to your sisters, Rahama, plead with your mother, plead, for she is not my wife neither am I her husband. Let her therefore put away her whoredoms out of her sight and her adulteries from between her breasts. Least I strip her naked and set her as in the day that she was born and make her as, as a wilderness and set her like a dry land and slay her with thirst. And I will not have mercy upon her children for they be the children of whoredoms. For their mother hath played the harlot. She that conceiveth, conceived them hath done shamefully. She, for she said, I will go after my lovers that give me my bread and my water, my wool and my flax, mine oil and mine drink. Therefore, hold, I will hedge up thy way with thorns and make a wall that she shall not find her paths. And she shall follow after her lovers, but she shall not overtake them. And she shall seek them, but she shall not find them. She shall say, I will go and return to my first husband. And um, for then it was it better with me than now. For she did not know that I gave her corn and wine and oil and multiplied her silver and gold, which they prepared for Baal. Therefore will I return and take away my corn from the time thereof and mine wine in the season thereof and will recover my wool and my flax given to cover her nakedness. And now will I discover her lewdness in the sight of her lovers and none shall deliver her out of mine hand. And I will also cause, her, cause all her mirth to cease, her feast days, her new moons, her Sabbaths and all her solemn feasts, and I will destroy her vines and her fig trees, whereof she hath said, These are my, re my rewards that my lovers have given me, and I will make them a forest, and the beasts of the field shall eat them. And I will visit upon her the days of Balaam, 
wherein she burned incense to them, and she decked herself with her earrings and her jewels, and she went after her lovers, and forgot, forgot me, saith the Lord. Therefore, behold, I will allure her and bring her into the wilderness and speak comfortably to her, and I will give her vineyards from thence and the valley of Achor for a door of hope, and she shall sing there as in the days of her youth, and as in the day when she came up from the land of Egypt. And I will, and it shall be at that day, saith the Lord, that thou shalt call me Ishi, and shalt call me no more Bali, for I will take away the names of Bali and Balim out of her mouth, and they shall no more be remembered by their name. And in that day will I make a covenant for them with the beasts of the field and with the fowls of heaven and with the creeping things of the ground. And I will ground and I will break the bow, bow and the sword and the battle out of the earth and will make them to lie down safely. And I will betroth thee unto me forever. Yea, I will betroth thee unto me in righteousness and in judgment, and in loving kindness, and in mercies. I will even betroth thee unto me in faithfulness, and thou shalt know the Lord. And it shall come to pass that day, I will hear, saith the Lord, I will hear the heavens, and they shall hear the earth. And the earth shall hear the corn, and the wine, and the oil, and they shall hear Jezreel. And I will sow, unto, um, sow her unto me in the earth, and I will have mercy upon her that had not obtained mercy. And I will say to them, which were not my people, thou art my people. And they shall say, thou art my God. So I have a question. Is the original intent of this to be at the end of the world or is God talking about when he's going to gather them again when he calls them out of Babylon back to Israel to rebuild the temple? The original intent would be I think the Go ahead. Go, on. Go ahead. Go ahead. Isn't it? Uh, yeah, the literal one. Yeah. To build the temple. So, how, I don't know if this is right to do because of the marks that we already have on this line, if you guys remember. But, then you would just you would have to extend the line right because when they come back on this earth would be after the 1000 years you know what I mean? do you know what i mean we're listening could, could you do that no i'm just asking because you know the vineyards and everything and all of that that stuff on this earth and i know in ellen white's writings and in the bible it kind of gets confused together with the end god is going to come take you and then you're going to have a new earth it's like really the way it says it it's like together you know what i mean but why are you thinking about the thousand years okay originally it's going to be they come back so we'll put how many for for how many years was it till they came back out of Babylon after seven twenty three? Six of six plus seventy five thirty eight. Five thirty six when the first Oh when they came back. Yeah. yeah. So a hundred and I can't calculate. Almost not almost two hundred. So let me get a calculator. One eighty five. 
So it was a long time. And then they came back, they took hold, they took ownership of the land, and they rebuilt the temple on earth. That's the literal. So, I don't know if you can do that though. I'm just trying to figure out where would chapter two fit on this working model that we have. Does anyone else have any ideas? No, for me that part's always been kind of confusing too. Yeah, because it's very clear the warning is that I'm gonna disown you. 723 in the literal. Yeah. And you're gonna go. I'm not going to look at you anymore. But then there comes a time. And this is, I think it's more about uh, the 10 tribes of Israel. Mm -hmm. But then. Um, so what are we trying to accomplish? What was the question? We're trying to see if we can make a line to fit chapters one, two, and three of Hosea, remember? Right. So we took the way marks of the time period in the original time of Hosea, which was in chapter one, verse one. But can, um, can we do that? Chapter two, I mean, I'm not, I'm not familiar with how to make lines and way marks. I'm not proficient in all that, but chapter two, to me, when I read chapter two, it's different than chapter one, whereas chapter one is more like um, a scattering, whereas chapter two is more of a gathering. Mm, yes, yeah, so remember, Israel was scattered and they never came back. It's only Judah that came back. But the promise for Israel is that day. So what is that day? When the two sticks join together. That's so Israel promise. never left Babylon? So who repopulated Judea and Israel when Christ was alive? No. Who was there? Israel know. was taken. The ten tribes were taken, but they never came back. Right, because they were they were taken by the Assyrians. Yes, they brought Assyrians and other people in the in the in those cities where the ten tribes lived. Oh. Those were the Samaritans. Right. So but, but chapter two in South, yeah. What was that Pal? Well as I'm saying in chapter two, I mean we're, it's 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 the language is is gathering, it's a gathering time. Yes, in that. So, so can we all? Can we? So, can we put them in the same line? I, I don't think so. So the part, the first part is like a scattering, but then it says, when you expect for God to say something bad, when He says, "I'm going to visit." upon her the days of Balim and you expect that to be something bad he says therefore I will bring her in the wilderness and I will speak comfortably unto her right so he's gonna do all this good stuff to bring her back right so so that's that's what gives me the idea that it, it, it's 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 gathering it's god is trying to bring his people back yeah so that's because that day is um, mentioned few times in the second part so that's why because um arminder said this is the gathering of the two sticks ezekiel 37 so that's why because remember israel is not going to be gathered until the end right so this is what I'm thinking about Sunday law. Hmm. 
So on that point then, this gathering also has five way marks, isn't it? Because it says, therefore, behold, I will allure her and I will bring her into the wilderness and I will speak comfortably unto her and I will give her vineyards from thence and the valley of a core for a door of hope. Hmm. Which is actually interesting because if you look at that, because the wilderness is actually, what? No, okay, sorry. Um, that's so confusing. Sorry, hang on. And that's still kind of too high up. Hang on. The second way mark where we would have, and I really like this a lot, 9-11, it says, I will bring her into the wilderness. Wow, I keep doing that. I'm just going to do this. Okay, so you have one. The first part of that says, allure her. Then you have wilderness. Bring her into wilderness. Speak comfortably. To her. Let me do this real quick because I can't see that. No, that's a question. It's okay. There. Um, give her vineyards. And Valley of Accor for a door of hope. So what is the Valley of Accor? I don't know what that is. I looked up and it, it, it um, Accor or Acon is the same thing. And what's that? Don't you remember? When um, they, it was, um, how do you call it? Jericho, when is it J Jericho when Achan took the Babylonian coat? I must have him here somewhere. Yeah, it means troubled. Achor means troubled. How would that fit to a for a door of hope? How would trouble? I know. I was saying, trouble. What? Trouble doesn't seem to fit with the door of hope. I'm gonna. So the door of hope is Christ. A review on Herald, February 1914. So. Um, the the of, what's is it? The door of hope is oh, okay. The valley of Achor is mentioned in Joshua chapter 7. Yeah. Yeah. What verse? Chapter uh, verse 24 through 25 and 26. Anybody know the story? To it's um, and Joshua and all of Israel with him took Achan the son of Zerah, and the silver, and the garment, and the wedge of gold, and his sons, and his daughters, and his oxen, and his axes, asses, and his sheep, and his tent, and all that he had, and they brought them unto the valley of Achor. And Joshua said, Why hast thou troubled us? The Lord shall trouble thee this day. And all Israel stoned him with stones, and burned them 
with fire after they had stoned them with stones. And they raised over him a great heap of stones unto this day. So the Lord turned from the fierceness of his anger, wherefore the name of that place was called the Valley of Achor unto this day. And that was where, um, with the acorn, uh, he like kept some of the, the treasures in one of the battles, right? I forget what. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's purification because they purify the camp of the, the one that troubled everybody, right? Oh, yeah, the destruction of the troubler. Yeah. And the other thing was that you said that I found interesting was, let's do this. Okay. Let's go. So he was still home, but a door of hope was open on him. The other not still hung over. Look what Ellen White is saying. Read it. Read it because I'm also reading something else. So I'm reading um, Patriarch and Kings 299.3. It says, in that day, the remnant of Israel and such as are escaped of the house of Jacob shall stay upon the Lord, the Holy One of Israel in truth. Isaiah 10.20. From every nation and kindred and tongue and people, there will be some who will gladly respond to the message, fear God and give glory to him for the hour of his judgment is come. They will turn from every idol that binds them to earth and will worship him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of water. They will free themselves from every entanglement and will stand before the world as monuments of God's mercy. Obedient to the divine requirements, they will be recognized by angels and by men as those that have kept the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. So this is the, the nations and tongues and... What is it talking about? Is that the commentary for this verse? Yes. Oh, okay. It's a commentary on Hosea, chapter 2. It's that's her application of it. Yeah. I don't know. I'm just trying to go through this and find what the door of hope is. See the prophecies of judgment delivered by Amos and Hosea, were accompanied by predictions of future glory. To the ten tribes, long rebellious and impenitent, was given no promise of complete restoration to their former power in Palestine. Until the end of time, they were to be wanderers among the nations. But through Hosea was given a prophecy that set before them the privilege of having a part in the final restoration that is to be made to the people of God at the close of earth history, when Christ shall appear as King of Kings and Lord and Lords. Many days, the prophet declared, the 10 tribes were to abide without a king and without a prince and without a sacrifice and without an image and without an effort and without teraphim. Afterward, the, afterward, the prophet continued, shall the children of Israel return and seek the Lord their God and David their king and shall fear the Lord and his goodness in the latter days. In symbolic lang language, Hosea said before the ten tribes God's plan of restoring to every penitent soul who would unite with his church on earth the blessed God blessing granted Israel in the days of their loyalty to him in the promised land. Sister Christina, what was the um, reference that you used in the previous uh, quote? Patriarch and Kings 298. Thank you. 
all of this, yeah. I like this though, that the door of hope is Christ, but it was made at the beginning. So you have end from beginning kind of, do you know what I'm saying? Anyone? Because it was at the very first moment that sin came in that the door of hope through Christ was made. And then at the very end, you would have it. Would you repeat your question yeah, or your comment? So there's multiple things that are the door of hope in Ellen White's writings, but I like this one because it's from the very beginning in Eden. Right, I got you. Yeah. So we should be starting, um, we should, okay, so we get, we need to like make us, like we got to start with the spirit, the literal, then if we don't see the literal, then we go to the spiritual. We have to use some of our rules instead of just trying to figure out a sentence because I'm not really catching on anything. We're doing it. We're not saying it explicitly, though, is the oh, thing. So okay. You look at it. Hold on. Hold on. We look at a thing and then we don't see any stuff in one way. So we try to go to a different thing to see if we can find something there. So it's we're trying to it's not so easy. the valley of acor is where god's anger turned away a door of hope oh what turned away Will you uh can i add something yeah did you write yeah. that from where so um i just want to add something about have you started using Miller's rules in this and using the first rule first to isolate the most important aspect of the verse that we're trying to glean from? But that, that's the thing that we established first is we're not looking at one single verse. We're looking at the whole story. So certain rules apply if you're looking only one verse at a time, but when you're looking at a whole story, you have to kind of change, you know what I'm saying? If it were just one verse we were looking at and trying to understand one verse, then we can try to figure out the most important word in there and build around that. Mm -hmm. But we're looking at three chapters and the theme we're looking at is we had earlier. We're trying to understand these children. So our theme that we're focusing on is these children. So these children are scattered and then these children are gathered again. So you have one legitimate child that Hosea had with Gomer that was Jezreel. But then Gomer, because she's a harlot, she had two other illegitimate children called Loruhama and Loami. And God said that, go away from here. I'm going to turn my back on you because these are the product of whoredoms and these are not my people and go away. But so that's the line of the scattering. But then he says, but then the day will come when I will bring her and her, which the other thing we identified was that God uses Gomer and her children interchangeably. They're the same thing. They're the same people because the Gomer is their ancestor. So he says, I'm going to scatter her. But then here it says, I'm going to gather her up again. So this allure her, bring her into the wilderness is the process of, of gathering her back in again. Is that making sense so far? Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So you're keeping it on a big line. Yeah. That, gonna... Well, I mean, this is the thing. It's, it's because it's based off the theme that we're looking at. And that's what we were, when we first opened up this study a few weeks ago, that was the thing that we were wanting to know is who are these children or Gomer that, you know, they're going away and then they're coming back. So how, what is this process? What does it look like? What's happening here? 
if does that make sense it makes sense i have a couple of thoughts running through my head though with it but i don't Go know if my thoughts are accurate Go well i was kind of well, I was wondering with the first and second third angel's message, because the three children, three angels, um, the first angel, but I'm fractalizing it, of course, on our line, because we're in the gathering time right now. Um, there is a separation from, um, from yeah, here, you've got... Um, but this was the Jezero, good... Firstborn, right. The good kid, is that what it says? Yeah, the good child, because he was legitimate. Yeah, and then you've got the two, right. But then they get, who gets brought back? Is it Lomi gets brought back? No, so these two are kicked away. Loruhama and Loami, both of these are kicked away because they're bad. God um, protects them. That's like Haggai and um, Ishmael. Ishmael was banished, she was banished, but God protects them in the wilderness. Um, similar, but it's not the same story. So he has a theme of doing that with his children. Um, yeah, I get, I can see that. Well, I know Ishmael but is different, is but... I've, I've seen, well, I don't know, it's a little different because I know with a lot of his, his, with Israel, this is his process that he does with Israel because they go follow other gods, God lets them take, get um, messed up by other nations, then God accepts them back again. So it's that same kind of process. You go scattered and then you get gathered again. So that's why these two... are the ones we've been kind of interested in. Mm -hmm. so this is what we came up last week, and this is chapter one where it talks about in this time period, you know, they got, I don't know if I could put the agricultural model in there because it's a scattering. Um, so, I'm, I'm kind of wondering if there's, if we have, okay, so here's my question. If you have um, five steps, because we've just, we've decided that in our way marks, a line of reformation of God calling his people back to himself, we have five major way marks. Tess has said this over and over again, right? And this is the process of gathering, right? Yes. So if we wanted to make it balanced, wouldn't then a scattering also be in five steps? Yeah. Could you say that? Yes. I, I don't know, like, because when you're using the five way mark line, what you're creating is a reform line and not all lines have to be a reform line. Like if you, you can be, t if you're telling a story, if you look at the line of like Pyrus, you don't have five marks, you're telling a story. So you're not going off the five way mark protocol. But if you're creating a reform line, a reform line is supposed to have those five way marks. I believe that is true. Right. A line of reform and bringing people back together, but wouldn't a line of falling apart and scattering people apart be the opposite of that? I don't know because you can't really call falling apart a reform. I'm not calling you know I mean? it a reform. But if you're gonna use the five way mark protocol for a, a scattering, a scattering is not a reform. It's, it's a gathering that would be, actually, you can't even say that a gathering is a reform because if you look at the Millerite time, if you look at the Millerite line, um, you have a period of scatterings, different periods of scatterings and gatherings within, within the reform line. So I, I think a scattering can be part of a line. So you're saying that you are not allowed to have five way marks for any other kind of line. Well, what we've been taught is that the five way mark protocol is, is, is giving you a reform line, no other line. I don't know if she said it's no other line. Well, look I, at the line of the line of Pyrus has mo way more way marks than that. Yeah. But right. I, I believe that's 
correct with what uh, Brother Jonathan is saying. So you can, like the line that you're creating, you can still create, but you don't, you're not, unless you can, unless your theme would be, like if there is a reform in that line, you can possibly cre create a reform line of that story. I'm not sure, because I'm not familiar with the story. But if you're doing that, you have to be going along, I don't know if you would call a, re a reform a theme, like if that would be the theme of the, of the line, and therefore you would have to have five way marks. I, I don't know if I'm being too, maybe I'm being too confusing because I'm trying to figure it out in my own head too. And I don't really I understand the story. Strict on it. I'm just going based off of what, like, I, I don't remember which video it was, but it was fairly recent where I'm at right now. And I'm just finally finishing up Africa where it was mentioned because Parminder, I think it was Parminder that was talking about it. Cause he said that not all lines have to have five way marks in it. But if you're, he said, when you're dealing with the five way marks, you're dealing with a reform line. And when you, I don't know if you like, you look at every, every reform line, whether it's the line of Moses, the line of, you know, ancient Israel, alpha, omega, modern Israel, alpha and omega, each one of those has to have a, a five point way mark because those are all reform lines. But when you look at, when you're telling a story, when you're taking a part of the, um, the Bible and you're, and you're trying to create a theme and you're telling a story, you don't have to have five way marks because the line yeah, of pirates is... There's a difference between you don't have to and you absolutely aren't allowed to though. I think the five, the five way marks are defining, are the definition of a reform line. Because if you look at what they are, you have a time at the end, you know, 9-11 or whatever you call it, Sunday law, close of probation and second advent. That's, that is a reform line. And there was a recent video, I don't remember which one either, but she specifically says that not every line is a reform line. There are lines that are not reform lines. I think that's generally what you guys are talking about, right? Yes. Right. right. And the, but, but the reform lines must have these five. Right. Which, which Adriana even, agrees. Even, even Adriana with what agrees with that. Sorry. Go ahead. Even with what you're saying, a, um, when it comes to a progressive ball, we're in a gathering. And a gathering is a reform is the reform line where you have your five way marks but within that gathering you still have it's because coming. you still have some coming up and you have some going down there's a progressive fall going on and a progressive climbing going on so i don't know if that's maybe what you're trying to think but this is a that's, that's, a, that's, that's going to be a I gathering said, that they're going to do that's what i said last week if you guys remember because it's even in acts 27 you see you see the progressive downfall of, you know, a thing, but the, the, it's not while one group of people is going up, the other group of people is falling worse and worse. It's, I, I saw those videos. I saw multiple videos where she's talking about that with reform lines and all of that. She's, and this is where I've made mistakes in the past too. I insinuate that it means another thing extra beyond what they say, but she said, not all lines are reform lines. That doesn't mean that all lines that have five way marks have to be reform lines. Can you give an example that of a of a line that is not a reform line that they've made that is that has the five way marks? No, because that's not my point of look. I'm just trying to look at these lines. Maybe it's this. I don't know, but I don't. If you're saying that you can't have anything, you're restricting, and it's not what they said. Do you know what I'm saying? I, well, that, I mean, I think I think that's what the dispute is because, like, I, I I'm understanding that that is what she said, and you're saying that it's not. And so, I guess if what we need to do is rather than trying to just say yes or no one way or the other, is there any example that they've come up with where they've used these five way marks in a line that was not a reform line? If they have, then that would show that oh, that, you know, what you're saying is correct. But if they haven't, then we need to we need to find out whether or not you can have a reform, a non-reform line that has these five way marks. Because I, I think it's these, these particular five way marks that actually define a reform line. That is the definition of a reform line. Uh, yeah, uh, a non-reform line Wait, can no, have... Really, I'm uh, sorry. But Jonathan, I don't think that they ever actually said that the, those five way marks are the definition of a reform line. So I'm just kidding. And I'm saying, I'm saying I think they have said that. So that's, that's just what I'm getting at is that like, 
we're, I think we both have a different perspective on that. So understanding whether or not that's the case might be important because either one of us could be wrong. I agree, but I think that to try to make a, a like you can have a non-reform line that has five way marks, but if they have these five way marks, a second advent means that there was a, re, a reformation. Yes. So uh, the reform line. So yeah, so there's a, there, from what I understand is there can be non-reform lines with five way marks that you can you can pass a th a, a, a thread through, but those yeah. five way marks, uh, if it's not if it's not 1989, 2001, Sunday Law, close of probation, Second Advent, it's not a reform line, even though it has five way marks. Yeah, they could just be five loose way marks of you right. know like of time periods or whatever. Right. Well, so if it has these 89, yeah. 2001, Sunday Law, close of probation. Second Advent, then it is a reform line. Because all these waymarks carry, um, they carry characteristics like 1989 is the time of the end, which means that you're coming to the end of, of I guess, a, a large scattering where God is going to now gather his people. And I forget how to say what the, the characteristics of 9-11 are, but you would never have these, these timelines like you couldn't have a timeline that has a time of the end with no 9-11. Oh, I'm getting too confusing. I'm thinking too far into it. So again, this first line up here is the line of a scattering. And if you want me to take those off, that's fine. But what we just said is this one here is a gathering. Mm -hmm. So would you be okay with me putting those here? I think if you if your intent is to draw a reform line, which means that each of these waymarks would have to carry the characteristic of of the of what you're putting above it. So if you're putting um, 1989 above allure her, you have to show that allure her is marking the time of the end. And if you're putting Valley of Accor for a door of hope, and you're putting that as a second advent, you have to show how this this part this verse is carrying the characteristic uh, the characteristics of that waymark. And likewise with all the other ones. Well, like just because it has five, it doesn't. Just because it has five lines, you found five lines. It doesn't mean that they're necessarily going to be a reform. They could be some. They could be a story like the line of Pyrus, where all the waymarks are important, the timelines are important, but they're not telling a story of reform. They're telling a different story. But I, I don't want to beat on with it because I. I mean, I. I could be wrong, but I just. I'm. That's. I think what I'm hung up on is that there is a difference between a reform line and like a, uh, one of those other, I don't know what you call the other lines, a storyline or whatever. So and that, a gathering and a reform line, they're not the same? They have nothing to do with I, it? I don't think so, because if you look at the Millerite line, um, within their reform line, you have a series of gathering and scatterings involved in that. And right. the period leading up to, the, uh, up to 1798 would also be con considered a scattering. So it's not like a, you, you, just because you have a gathering that that makes it a reform line. Gatherings and scatterings are involved in a reform line, but they're not the same thing. Like a gathering and, and, uh, and a reform line are not synonymous. Okay. Right. So from what I see that this may or may not be a reform line. That's right. It could be either way. I'm right. not saying it isn't. Yeah. Right. So, but what, but if it, if it is, a, if it's to be a reform line, then as Brother Johnson said, we must show the, the characteristics that makes it a reform line. For example, when we say speak to, speak comfortably to her, and we put Sunday law above that, how does speaking comfortably to her characterize a Sunday law? We haven't been able to get that far. Right. So that's what we have to show if we, if we want this to be a reform line. Which is, I thought, is what we were trying to do. Right. So we can try it. Was the point. Uh, we, we, could, we could be right. We could be wrong. But we can definitely try it. <sighs> this, here's the thing. Here's my thing. I understand what you guys are saying. But there are certain lines that didn't exist, and we didn't know that a structure like that existed until people experimented with it and did a study on it and tried to figure it out. And parables are supposed to be something, as uh, Parmender would say, that you can twist and flip and turn and change and move around. I know we have to do it carefully, but if we get, you know, 
stopped in a place where we can't even like move forward somewhere i that's where i'm kind of at trying to figure this out because what other direction do you have where else right. do you go from here I'm trying so to the direction, the direction, the the only reason I'm semi familiar with this is just because I'm in the middle of watching the video called Shut Door Concept from um, one of the smaller African ones. And what he's talking about in that storyline, he's talking a little bit about Acts 27 and how Tess developed that message. Um, and what it was, he said, the very first thing before you before you're approaching these things, and as we understand, is that you have to under you have to come up with what what your theme is. And so when you have a theme, I don't know if that's, if a reform line, if that means, if that's also a theme, like your theme is that you're looking to see if there's a reform line, but her, her theme in Acts 27 was two ships equaled two institutions. And so that's where she started. So I don't know that she necessarily just dropped the Sunday law waymark at, um, I forget what it, what it is in Acts 27. I don't think that she necessarily just dropped those lines over certain verses and went from there. I think that's, that's jumping things out of order a little bit. I, I honestly can't remember what the order is, but the first thing that Parminder said is we have to, we have to figure out what our theme is. And then when you're looking for when you've, and I honestly don't know how to do that. Cause it's like, well, how do you do that without knowing anything like you, like you're saying, like, how, where do you even start? How do you, how do you even start with a theme? But that's what he was talking the most about in that. I think sometimes when you see a definite spot that you know that yeah. where, where it door. fits, like if you, if you see a shut door, then you can work your way backwards. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. So like they, if you look at the story of Noah, I think that's how they, I think that's how they got the story of Noah was the fact that there was a shut door on the ark. They realized that, okay, there's a poss possibility that there's a reform line here and they could work either way from that shut door. So and, and, and could it and could it also be possible that this could be a reform line with all those favor of uh, five major waymarks, but uh, but it um, oh what's the word I'm using? It, it may not be the big hundred forty four thousand line. It could be the priest line, or it could be maybe the the Levite line, or it could be uh, nothing in that one of the fractal lines. Could it be that? I think there's potential that what she's already laid out could have aspects of a reform line and I mean that's something that we'd have to find out right but a but the, as, we, it, as we twist and turn yeah that's right but just yeah. like Adriana said like like we don't want to restrain ourselves so much but it, my only concern was that we just dropped these way marks on top of it and I, I think if you're if you're going to do that that's fine but the very first thing that we should do from that point is find out whether or not these these uh, sections of the verses that have been put there find out, okay, is there any way that these actually hold the characteristics of the waymark that we just designated to them? Because yeah, I, don't, I don't think you can fractalize before you can put it on the big line. Is that correct? I think you're probably right, yeah. Because fractalizing would be, you, uh, you'd have to have an understanding of the big line first. Because the fractal, fractals all come from the big line, so it has to be a big line before you can fractalize. And not yeah. everything, if I remember standing correctly, can be fractalized either. I'm still trying yeah. to grasp that, but like with uh, Matthew 13, we the terrors um, can't be fractalized. We were talking about that last night. Yeah, that sounds right. So I'm not going to refer. Well, you, well, you had the you had the a lot of lot onto the subject of the door of hope. I kind of had a question on that just in the connection because you said there's different understandings of the door of hope. That's um, good to know. But what is the what is the application of the door of hope? The reference, what if you took it back to the Old Testament, what is the door of hope? Because I always know that pointed back to Achan. And I think your mom read that. And um, But how do you connect a door of hope to the destruction of Achan and all his family? We just said that. That's what we were trying to answer. That this is the thing. We we got a little sidetrack here, and we are not even. Um, I'm not going to mention anything as a reform line anymore. But I'm going to say because this was pretty clear. Because this is the way mark of of when Israel is scattered, and this is saying that they're going to be scattered. And the other thing is, if I don't know if we've missed some studies or what, but at the beginning. When we first opened this up, we looked at 
who this group is trying to identify. And we have different answers because it, it, it could be Israel, but Paul, Paul took it and changed it. And Parminder mentions one of these, mentions this in one of his videos that Paul decided to make it the Nethinims, but the Bible originally intended it to be the 10 tribes of Israel. And then the literal, literal one would be Hosea and Gomer and his literal children. So you have Hosea and Gomer and his literal children. And then the, the, based on the context, you have the, the first spiritual or the second application would be ancient Israel, the 10 tribes. I'll put that on there so it's more clear. Definitely something to be understood because that's the question that I've always had. Who is Israel versus who is the world? And then according to Paul, it was, um, I'll just, I'll not put, because he didn't know about methanims, I'll just put Gentiles. Yeah. According to Paul. So, so were, were, the, were the two tribes the priests and the ten tribes were the Levites? Is that how it worked? No. So the, and two, I made up. the two tribes were Judah and Benjamin. Yeah. All the tribes had priests. No, no. no. All, they were interspersed between, but the, all the priests came from the tribe of Levi. Levi. Yeah. But they, when the division happened, because uh, Jeroboam made priests of the lower of the people, then the Levites came to Jerusalem and they, they kind of attached themselves to the two tribes, to Judah. Okay, so that's, that's what we learned the first time we did this. So that's who we have this split up and we've been working up off of this. So what we realized, and it's tricky what we were doing and we were paying attention to this because it was interesting what the Bible did. The Bible is talking about in this time period, the scattering of the 10 Northern tribes of Israel. It's not talking about Judah because Judah was scattered afterwards, right? Right. Mm -hmm. So this is talking about Israel, and it's talking about Hosea, who's in Israel. His message is to Israel, but for some reason, it talked about and brought in the four kings of Judah that were also alive during this time period. And it only gave Jeroboam as the only leader of Israel. So we have four kings, and then the end result of what it's all talking about that's how we brought up these waymarks. So we're not going to call it a reform line. We're just going to call it a theme of a scattering where yep. you see where, you know, all through this history of these four kings and then the final end, you have Hosea warning that the 10 tribes are about to be scattered. So these mm -hmm. two children are supposed to be assigned to Israel saying you are like Lo Ruhama and Lo Ami because you are always wandering after pagan gods because that's what they did they made two centers where they had golden calves and started worshiping the wrong god so god's going to take them out of the way and he's not going to look at them anymore and we saw mm -hmm. that we had different things happening in hosea's life that match along this line you had him and his marriage to gomer um and then you had their first son jotham uh, is uh, jezreel which also means sow seeds which is why we had 9-11 there. 9-11, yeah. yeah. So, um, and then this is the name of Jezreel. And then you had here under Ahaz, I forget what his name means, but you had Lo, Lo Ruhama, which is the first one. The name means no more um, have uh, mercy upon the house of Israel. So no more mercy upon the house of Israel. And then Loami means, you are not my people, and I will not be your God. And that was, bam, done. It was right here. Progressive fall. Yeah. And then after this, you have some time, and then the Assyrians come and take them away captive. So that's what we had developed. It took us a mm -hmm. lot of time to just get the kings in order and get this structure built in exactly how the verse talks about it. And we're, we were just going based off of what the Bible gave us. So why did the, the Bible give us these specific kings and this time period? So we just went with that. So now we saw that this is a scattering. So now we're going to go here and we're going to call this a gathering. So first off at this first waymark, you have what we're going by is in chapter 2, 
verse 14 is where it starts to talk about God bringing back Gomer. And he does it in five ways. We saw that this was interesting. So we plotted these five ways. The first was, I will allure her. And then the next is, bring her into the wilderness. Then the next is, speak comfortably unto her. And then the next is, I will give her vineyards from thence. And then finally, the valley of a core for a door of hope. Um, and she shall sing it. So the other thing that I wanted to point it out, my mom found the, the meaning of allure is um, the, the quality of being powerful and mysteriously attractive or fascinating. Another thing I want to point out is that when it says in the verse itself, and the valley of a core for a door of hope, then it has a colon there. And it says, and she shall sing there. So there, I'm assuming, is this valley, because that's the only geographical place that it talks about. So there's a valley, a geographical place of a core for a door of hope. And there, and she shall, she shall sing there as in the days of her youth and as in the day when she came up out of the land of Egypt. Exactly. That sounds like, that, that sounds like a restoration. When God's anger turned away. Huh? So when God's anger turned away, that's the valley of Achor. Oh, so let's read that. Let's go back to Joshua because that I think was an important point. So Joshua 7, 24. And 26. Joshua 26. It started in 24 though, didn't it? Because I can't, I'm not going to get the whole thing from the one verse. So, and Joshua and all Israel with him took Achan, the son of Zerah, and the silver and the garment and the wedge of gold and his sons and his daughters and his oxen and his asses and his sheep and his tent and all that he had. And they brought them uh, up to the valley of Achor. Um, how many were there that he took away? And Joshua and all Israel with them took Achan, the son of Zerah, silver, garment, wedge of gold, his sons, daughters, oxen asses sheep and tent 11 i think 10 10 10 yeah isn't there some isn't there a meaning to 10 uh, the meaning of 10 is uh, the judgment so there's a judgment here yes it is a judgment on um it is a judgment on acor but it is the cleaning of the camp because of him they could not win against uh, the ai ai yes right okay so uh, that's why it says where god's anger turned away because once they cleaned the camp they were a pure people and they were able to be winning okay so there was the yes, yeah. So there were these, so I think they're significant to those 10 things mentioned because that, that is God's judgment. And so Achan sin, God judges. And now verse 25. So the reason why Achor is a door of hope, which my mom pointed out earlier is because that day, um what is it so the lord turned from the fierceness of his anger wherefore the name of the place was called the valley of a core so god turned away from the fierceness of his anger right after the judgment in verse 25 it says and all israel stoned him with stones burned them with fire after they had stoned him with stones that's repetition Stoned them with stones, burned them with fire, and stoned after they stoned them with stones. Any significance to those? Yeah. So, so a judgment, so, so a sin, judgment, purification. So I think I think verse twenty six. It just says what it is because we're not. We're not doing a parable on uh, on these verses. Twenty-five. That's verse twenty-five that he's reading. 
No, it, it, I know, but it's verse 26 that, 26 that gives you the, the summary of what it means. And that's what we care about because the other ones were not doing a parable on verse 24 and 25, were in Hosea. So, wait, 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 but you also, so then if this is a summary, you also have, and they raised over him a great heap of stones unto this day. So you have someone who's getting buried by stones, but it saves everybody else. Yeah. Y yeah. Interesting. So after the judgment, the camp was cl cleansed, and then the Lord's anger turned. Yes. So I'm going to say the offender buried by stones. So you have the two groups, two classes. Yeah. So would hope then be the memorial? Yeah. Uh, yeah, because see, uh, you can put that at the second coming when, when those, the offender is going to die, is going to burn. Actually, they're going to die. And then the other ones, the big ones will... Uh, will see Jesus, the door of hope. A pasture. Can I ask a question? Where the cattle are driven, this open field. Can I ask a question? Yeah. Yes. What's it? Are you guys saying the door of hope is a shut door? No. no. Okay. The door of hope is Jesus. That looks like second yeah. coming, Advent. Yes, exactly. And it looks like restoration, too. Yes. What did it say? A pasture open field where the cattle are driven open field also desert what else makes you guys think of a woman being taken into the wilderness is that Bring anything to anyone's mind by any the chance? Church, bring it into the wilderness. Revelation 12. Yeah. Yes, that definitely, Revelation 12 for sure. Yeah, where she is nourished. And yes. You know, we had hiding time yep. that time period. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 11. Everything falls in place. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Speak comfortably. Let's see what that means. Where did it say that? The reason where they isn't it? Uh, 14? Oh, yeah, yeah. Comfortably. How do you use that, though? That's just the conjugation. We're going to look at the next word. The heart also used very widely for the feelings, the will, and even the end. Whoa. That's weird. Do you guys see this? So the second, so the first word is like a conjugation, a preposition for comfortably for the definition of it. But the second word, it means the heart also used figuratively very widely for the feelings, the will, and even the intellect, likewise for the center of anything. The center of anything. If you look at the Sunday Law Waymark, it's the center of everything. I don't know if that makes any, any sense. <laughs> yeah, we do. Uh, 
That's not, that's not, we need to look here for it because it's from the lab. So, considered courage, heart, kindly, midst, mind. It's very interesting, this one. Consent is interesting because the Sunday yeah. law is, is anti-consent. Yeah. Oh, there's some really interesting words here. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna do that because that's what I'm gonna do. I don't wanna write all that. Bam. Can somebody remind me what Parminder had taught in the past when there's a semicolon after a word? Does that mean there's a break in that sentence and, and a new thought is presented? Is that what that means? Yeah, it's usually a uh, compare and contrast or repeat and enlarge. And a colon is okay, a colon. Thanks. And what? There's a colon and there's a semicolon. So a colon is a chiasm, like a mirror image, and then a semicolon is a compare and contrast. Also, from the study that I'm doing right now, when he talks about how, you know, what we're doing, we're going and looking um, at strongs and stuff. So you have a, you have a semicolon, then you have a dash. So you have two sides. You have the definition on one side. On the um, right side, you have the uh, semicolon and the dash, and they're separate from each other. So that's also what he teaches. At least that's a study I'm doing right now in that methodology. Okay. Yeah, I know, I know. This is, this is the quick cheating form, I think. I don't know how to get all those definitions from inside the text because it's a list format. It's not like it's giving context around it, but um, I'm not sure what to put down for vineyards. I put that there's fruits there and it's maybe a harvest because it's talking about the agricultural model. You have a vineyard that's fruitful. It's wine doctrine. Wine doctrine. Grape juice. Because he, uh, so he'll go into Strong's because we'll get some words from Strong's. And then when you go into, um, what is it? Driver Briggs and... Brown driver Briggs. Right, right. Then when you go into them, they have something different. Um, so he brings that up too. It depends, not all of them have an explanation. Right, right. So the other thing for this way, Mark, though, is as, as the day thou came out of Egypt. Thou came so they were clean and pure when they came out of Egypt day when she came up so she is referring to God's people so day she came up out of Egypt um, I'm just looking, um, maybe I'm reaching a little bit far here, but when we're taking a look at Revelation 12 and being nourished, wouldn't that be then also an increase of knowledge? Where then when we're talking about that of being the center, this is where we see the heart work. The heart Oh, the what? The heart work. Oh. That's the center of the human being. Would a major way mark, like if you had, if, you were, if we were marking that Revelation 12 way mark as 9-11, we can't also mark it as an increase of knowledge though, can we? Or is that like that? Because that would be a Boston, that way mark. And the following way, uh, minor way mark would be a Concord, which is an increase of knowledge. You know what I mean? In a test. So, um, Tess recently did a presentation where she said that there's two things happening, but I can't remember what the uh, 
So for the for the 144,000, this isn't for the institutions. It's not for um, the priests or the Levites or Nethanims. This is strictly for the 144,000, right? Mm -hmm. You have the second advent. Um, you have you have COP. You have Sunday law. You have 9/11 and you have 1989 and what she put was plowing former laddering harvest can i say something silly hold on just a second okay i think she made this um an increase of knowledge and this was a formalization? I can't remember, but she was saying, cause in the priest line, we're in the harvest time, but on the 144,000 line, we're still in an increase of knowledge. And then the next way mark would be the test? Yeah, yeah, that's right. That looks right. That looks like the right pattern. Well, then what happened? What are the first and the last way marks then? Well, that's the that's the second advent, and that's the time of the end. The beginning. That's what I wanted, that's what I wanted to say. So on, mess, but, on, hang on, it's a message unsealed at the beginning. Go on, Tony. No, because uh, I thought we were learning that um, that the time of the end is progression, so it always starts with seventeen ninety eight. I thought, and not eighty nine anymore. Because it's at 89 isn't really like a time of the end. It's a just progression of the time of the end, 1798. Yeah, this is talking about something different. Okay. This is just talking about the line of the 144,000 mm -hmm. in the terms of one single dispensation. So you know how each one of these little things we've been saying that they're dispensations that will put message unsealed, increase of knowledge, gotcha. formalization, and then... Uh, test and the closed door, which yeah. this would also be the closed door. Okay. I don't know. I don't remember her going into it that far, but she made, she made these two increase in knowledge formalization. I'm pretty sure. Just looking at it as one, the big fractal. Hold on. She wasn't looking at it as a fractal. She was just looking at it as one, one single dispensation with the, with this going up like that. Anyways. But then I like I can kind of see that. But then you have three marks in the middle instead of the two that you'd normally have. Yeah. So maybe it just ends here because this is just you're going home or something. I don't know. Maybe yeah. <laughs> like if you would yeah, you wipe the last bit off. Yeah, so I would just have yeah. to take that out. Yeah, that, yeah, it's possible. You said that was in, she was talking about that in, um, was that in Brazil? Yeah. Okay. I'm pretty sure it was in, I think it was the first one she did. Okay. That's the one that I, I transcribed earlier. I think it was in the first one. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. I can see that there. That kind of makes sense. Yeah. Like a, just a big, a big dispensation. Yeah. Yeah. Because she said everything that came that, oh, oh, no, 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 no. This isn't right. This isn't right. No. No. Now I remember. Okay. So I don't, I don't know what the formalization one went under, but this one was a Sunday law. This was a Sunday law because she said this message that's been opening up throughout this time period is the big the what the understanding what the big sunday law is going to look like because she said at one level on the priest line we're in the harvest time but it's a jacob's time of trouble and we don't have we don't have any new message here we're just going on with the equality message but she mm -hmm. said at the same time we're also living through the 144,000 line where we're getting more knowledge on what the big national Sunday law is. So at one level, we're dealing with equality. And at the other level, we're getting more understanding on what the national Sunday law looks like. Mm -hmm. so pointing to those two issues. Okay. That's what 
So, but I don't know what goes here then. I don't remember. Oh, I think it was, I think it was Panium. Yeah, it was Panium. It was pan Panium because this is where the deadly blows are hit that bring you to this. So I think, mm -hmm. oh man, anyways. No, oh, I said eraser, okay. So back to this though. I would still make the National Sunday Law a test. Yeah. Yeah, because that's the test. That is the test that tests God's people. Well, the images, I guess. Which is the Sunday Law thing as well, so. Well, that's where I get confused because I was like watching, I think it was the video I watched yesterday of Carmander and he was, he was showing them that the image and the mark are two different things. The image is the test for the priest and the mark is the test for the Levites. Oh, the really? Test. I think he was saying something like that. I, I almost hate saying anything now because I almost like, did I actually get what he was saying? <laughs> and the, you know, and then you share it and you're like, oh, I hope I'm right. I just don't know if I'm grasping it. Okay, well, so let's see here. This is what we have so far. This, this has a lot, actually, if you look at it. So we looked at the history of what a court, a court is, and you know, that whole history of that story, which is interesting. And um, which, if you guys, so at this point, if, if, if this was the second advent way mark in Revelation 17 in the last um, the vial, right? In Revelation 18, so you have the destruction of Babylon, but when you look in Revelation 18 and the destruction of Babylon, it talks about all the silver and gold and merchants and merchandise and everything, right? And Achan was the one who was holding on to merchandise. I don't know if that fits, but anyways, you have two classes of people. One is destroyed. One destroyed. And the other one is, is saved from God's wrath, which is the vials are God's wrath, isn't it? I don't know, but one is saved. But anyways, um, like the day she came up out of Egypt. So the fender is buried. Um, cleaning of the camp, 10 things taken from Aiken. Okay, so where else do you guys want to go from here? Where, what else can we look at that you guys see that's interesting? Oh, we didn't put the, in, in that day, so if we, I'm going to erase all this. In that day, right, she's not going to call him her husband anymore. She's going to call her, her father or her Lord anymore. She's going to call him her husband. Yes. Which we were looking at that last week. Also the 10, this is just a, I'm just thinking the 10 things taken from Aiken. Uh -huh. that, could that be like the plagues? Um, yeah. There's seven. So there's 10 in Egypt, but there's seven at the end. Yeah, yeah, but there's 10 in Egypt. Yeah, well, Egypt yeah. Oh, yeah, for like when she came up out of Egypt. She came up out of Egypt, yeah. 10 plagues. Okay, I'll put that over there. And I forgot what it's... Oh, so um, Ishii. Ishii was husband, right? Yeah, yeah. Ishii was husband. And we're going to well, say... If you call him now, husband, right? Is that what she said? She's not going to call him Lord anymore. She's going to call him husband. So there's a marriage. Hang on just a second. I think that's our lawn guy. Okay, so 
Ishi equals husband, and so she's going to be betrothed to him now, so she's going to call him her husband, but Bali is Lord, and she's not going to call him Lord anymore, which is interesting because in Israel, in ancient Israel times, all women called their husbands Lord and men Lord. I don't know if you guys ever noticed that before. Right, like Sarah calling Abraham Lord. Yeah. Yes. So it's like an equality thing now. Kind of, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's what we mentioned last week. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just uh, looking at that with the offender being buried by stones. Um, and I'm just kind of thinking there also with uh, Haman being hanged and his 10 sons, like 10 plagues, right? 10 sons. Yeah, I remember that. So I'm going to put Haman maybe under here. Uh, don't, because we don't know that line. We don't know if it applies to that one. Or oh, yeah. Oh, man. Esther never made sense. I still struggle with Esther. Because we never looked again. Um, what I'm wondering is, because it's bringing up stones. Anyone thinking of Daniel? Right? So you have... You have the stone. Mm -hmm. Stone cutting out the image of the mountain. Yep. And stone hitting the image. Yeah. Right. I Which verse is that is the uh, stone from? Stone chapter 89. Good. Well, technically. That would, would be Daniel chapter 2. Yeah. Yeah. Where do we get stone in Hosea from? What, what verse was that? That was going back through the valley of, of Accor. Right? So from the valley of Accor, which is what, so in Hosea it says, I will give you the valley of Accor for a door of hope. So we went to see what the valley of Accor is, and that's where Achan was buried by stones. Right, oh, verse okay. 25, Joshua, yeah, verse 25. Yeah. Joshua 7. Yeah, 25. Achan was buried by stones. Yeah, they burned him and buried him by stones, which is interesting. That is interesting because, like yeah, well, if you look at Daniel 2 and you have... We can't understand... They they stoned him to death? No, he was buried with stones. Elaine, can you hear us? Sounds yeah. Like yeah, they stoned him with stones burned them with fire after they had stoned them with stones oh where was that at? I, could, I didn't find stones in the verse there yeah joshua so 7 them, 25. Yeah. oh from joshua so joshua 7 25 is talking about what the valley of a core of a core is and so 25 and joshua said why hast thou troubled us he's talking to achan because they had a battle in achan they were told not to take any of the valuables of the people they were battling against but Achan took, um, took, let's see, and Joshua and all Israel with him look, took Achan, the son of, Jez, of, Ze, of Zerah, and the silver and the garment and the wedge and the gold he took. So this is the stuff that he was hiding under his tent. And then uh, Joshua said, why hast thou troubled us? The Lord shall trouble thee this day. So it's that it's not God is not troubling his people. It's God is troubling the bad person on that day. And mm -hmm. all Israel stoned him with stones and burned them with fire after they had stoned them with stones. And they raised over him a great heap of stones unto this day. When I think of that, like the, when you were making the comparison with Daniel 2, you have the stone coming down and destroying the statue, which was the king of the north. But then a mountain was made out of the, that stone, right? And yeah. that would be like a heap of stones burying the king of the north. And, and not only that, when you look at Revelation, you see that the king of the, um, the ones represented, that the king of the north represents are burned with fire. See, that's why more heads are better than one. <laughs> yeah. But when you're stoning, can you guys hear me? I'm on back roads. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah we can hear you. So when you're stoning with stones, I mean, literally, they were picking up stones like they did with Stephen, and they were throwing them at him to kill him, right? Mm -hmm. So if you're stoning with stones, then you're 
then if you're going to take it from the literal to the spiritual, right, then what are you stoning it with? Because the stones can be truths and jewels that are that are stoning someone to death. But Stephen wasn't stoned with the truth, no, so to speak. No, Stephen wasn't, no. <laughs> but what, it would have been the opposite. Right. So, well, I mean, I'm just trying to relate what you're talking about, Ink, and what do you mean when you're saying, how do you go to Daniel 2 in the statue when you when you see stone with stone? Because you see that, I think in this passage here, you have, um, you have, it's the bad people that are buried with the stones and yeah. that are first stoned and then they're buried under a heap of stones. So if you look at the, the, the bad group of people at the end, they would be, um, it's the stone that's cut out of the mountain that stones the foot of the King of the North statue. And then a great mountain is made, which would be the heap of stones burying that statue. And also in our movement, you have the great, we're the stone, right? That hits the statue, but also individually, we're each a stone that builds the temple. Yeah. So singular right, well, what I'm saying is the truth, that we, we learned this some from Second Samuel, which is well, 22, but the truth, the rain comes down on the good and the bad, and the rain, the, the, the stones are are going to be for good for the for the, for the good, you know what I mean, is they're going to be for, for bad for the wicked. Am I wrong about that? You know, I'm going to have to agree with you, Elaine, there, because I just was uh, reminded there of Isaiah 28 again, when we're talking about uh, that of precept upon precept, line upon line. Yes. And, you know, so this is uh, part of our message. And, um, you know, for, for those uh, other ones, it, it's going to be a stumbling block, because it'll be um, where you find in verse um, yeah, verse 13, that it is here little and there little, that they might go and fall backward, be broken and snared and taken. So their rejection of the truth, that's, they're, they're receiving stones, they're receiving truth, they're receiving, uh, um, it's not literal stoning, we know that, but the truth comes out to all and it's in their rejection of the truth that it destroys them. Um, so my issue with that when it comes to the stones being truths is, is that, well, we would, you would look at it as a progressive, right? So if we're going to bring Daniel too, because I didn't think about this before, it's a progressive work, but it usually happens, I don't know, doesn't it happen between Sunday long close of probation? Because no one's giving yeah. any more truth at this way mark. No, you won't find the uh, this, the truth at that particular way mark, but you do find the burial at that particular way mark. Right. So if we're that's the thing. So this is where we're we're pelting with truth, but this is just where the final destruction is happening. That's where you find the monument. Yeah. So I guess let me let me change it then. Let me do this. We're experimenting, Mom. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so I'm going to take that out of there. Because here, the heap, you're already a mountain, right? Isn't it? The heap of stones? Right, and then put the, um, the other stone where you thought, where you think it should go. Uh, this one was the middle way mark, right? So we'll say. Mm -hmm. There, but it's, but it's a progressive, but here, this is just, this is just craziness. <laughs> <laughs> because Babylon is dealing with its nonsense and we're dealing with our time of trouble and there's no message going on anywhere. It's just craziness. I'm just leaving that there. Is there, is there not a message in that time? Because there, there is a way mark for an increase of knowledge. Like, or I think she, I don't know if she actually labeled it as an increase of knowledge, but there is a concord at the death decree. 
Yeah. I, yeah, was, I can't see the screen, so I don't know what you guys are. You are you saying there's no message Sunday law to um, to close the probation? No, we're saying there's it. no message at the second coming. Oh, okay, okay. I thought you were saying Sunday law to close the probation. No, we have, so we had the stone coming out of the mountain at the close of probation, but it's supposed to be at Sunday law to close of probation. That's where we moved it. And we placed the mountain or the heap of stones at the second coming because God's people are all together and ready to go at the second, at the second coming. You have this, the people assembled, everyone's. Well, they, they call, they call for the rocks to fall upon them. Yeah. Same. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's true, huh? Bad people call for the rocks to. You said bad people, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. This is really interesting how much rock symbology is in our message. You guys ever notice that? There's a lot of rocks happening all the time. Mm -hmm. And I think that they can have multiple meanings. So it's always about making sure that you're. The right meaning is being used because you have this you have the stones crying out and the stones don't necessarily represent well actually maybe they do well you still find christ as being the rock of offense yep yeah oh yeah uh huh rock of offense where would would that go here could we put that here but it's not part of Hosea. No, we're, but we're including too many things, God. It doesn't appertain to the okay study. All right. And does anyone know anything else we can put here for vineyards? Because I want to look. We looked very limited into this. So spiritually speaking, vineyard isn't that God's people? Yes, the vineyard is supposed to be the house of Israel. Right. So yeah, we're, Isaiah. Isaiah, but I can't think of which chapter. Maybe and I don't. I don't have access to look things up. But Isaiah, when he talks about the vineyard, it's not like chapter. I want to say it's early on, but I have. I, I can't look it up. Chapter five, four in there somewhere. Is that where he talks about the vineyard? My beloved, the vineyard, or is that way later on? Twenty-seven. Maybe it's twenty-seven. I can't remember off the top of my head. In the context of Hosea chapter two, it, it almost sounds like an inheritance or a reward because it says, therefore, behold, I will allure her and bring her into the wilderness and speak comfortably to her. And I will give her her vineyards from thence. So could a vineyard represent yeah, your reward in heaven? Like It's like your inheritance. Yeah. The one that was given when they came out of Egypt. Because it says her twice, right? So it says, I will give her her vineyards. So they were allotted to be hers already. Yeah, because um, yeah, wine also can be doctrine. Would there be an inheritance here, though? Yeah, that's the thing. It's yeah. not yeah. necessarily. It just sounds like, I mean, if we're looking at the context of the passage that we're looking at, yeah, we'll put it does sound more, more like inheritance there, but I could be wrong on that. So let's keep reading here. I think the rest is just repeat Whoa. and enlarge. Okay, so, well, that's good then. It could give us more information. Yeah. So, um it's all about that day well okay so that day meaning this final day which yeah. seems to be where we're getting the most of our information so that day let's see what else it says verse 17 for i will take away the names of balim out of her mouth and they shall no more be remembered by their name so satan is not going to be remembered anymore So I'm just taking a look for vineyard again, and I found it in Isaiah 5, verse 7. It says, For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel, and the men of Judah his pleasant plant. And he looked for judgment, but behold, oppression, for righteousness, but behold, a cry. Yeah. So uh, one, one, one of the rules... Oh, oh, sorry, go ahead. I always cut out y'all. I know you're Canadian. <laughs> um, 
but that that's the verse I was trying to think of. I remember the study, the vineyards, the church, and and when Christ oh, yeah. comes back, this time he comes with a sickle, and um, but also the the grapes will be crushed. Um, how does that verse go? And it's it's bad grapes. Um, oh, I don't remember how that goes in Revelations, but it's at his second coming. The grapes coming. of wrath shall be. Revelation yeah. fourteen. It's the Revelation yeah, fourteen. That's right um one thing that i wanted to mention though one of the is someone talking right now or is it just me Sorry. No, I, think I thought it was lagging um one of the things i wanted to mention though is that uh parminder made a strong point as of going to other verses in the bible to define what something means in a particular verse without finding out what it means in that verse first so if we're jumping around looking for different places that vineyard is being used and using the definition in other passages, that goes against uh, one of William Miller's rules that we're supposed to find the definition within the passage before we go anywhere else. So you guys then, remember? Um, well, so we could, this is why we could end up with a lot of different explanations for a word, but how do we know that that's what is meant in the context of the verse? So then I'm just going to box this in then as the main contextual one. Okay. Because it does seem like her. So. But what verse is this? 15. So, but before when I wanted to do that with William Miller's rules, going back to rule one, you told me you're doing all three chapters all at once. So that throws the rules out right if if it's only how do i say this i think we're going verse by verse now no? in, in the story we're changing it up on ali <laughs> i'm sorry, sorry. Ali. <laughs> oh man I was, okay um i don't know what we're doing then so we okay Let's see here. Now my mom says we're going verse by verse. <laughs> I don't know what to say anymore. But it's probably a good idea then. I'm sorry, Allie. It's okay. I still love you. You sure? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if I would. <laughs> Uh, well, it made sense what I was saying at the time, but now it doesn't make sense anymore. <laughs> well, it's something that you give her like you did when she came out of Egypt. So when they came out of Egypt, they went in Canaan and they got vineyards and houses and lands and all this inheritance. Right? Mm hmm why hmm so you get your inheritance here then and then this happens you shall not for be remembered by the name and in that day i will make covenant So when, um, if let's say in that close of probation, right, before the second coming, mm -hmm. is when whoever is righteous, let them still be righteous. Righteous, isn't that the inheritance you get? I don't, I don't know because it sounds like we're in a mess after that point from what parminder has been saying. We still have to get ourselves together then. Yeah, because it's Jacob's time of trouble and we're actually, that's when we're actually wrestling with God. Yeah. Um, we're wrestling with him because we still have these things about us that we know if we let them go, then we're, we're not going to be fixed. Yeah. That's... Oh man, it's so hard. <sighs> Will you lead us then? Keep going. Where do you want to go from here? 
So we did verse 17, right? Mm -hmm. So you don't call me Bali anymore. You call me husband. Uh, so I will take the name of Satan out of your mouth. You shall no more remember wait, him. Wait, wait, wait. I have a question. Yeah. So how come we... Why are you saying Balim is 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 the other God? Is not the God of heaven? Is the other one? So then, explain yeah. verse sixteen to me. Why were we calling God Bali? You're gonna call me, you're gonna call me husband. Now. I don't know, but uh, see uh, here in the beginning when she went after Balim, maybe they were called lords. Gods, isn't oh, it? it? That is not God. It looks like the same name, though. How is it going to be different? Yeah, they were lords and gods, also. Remember? Yeah. But this doesn't refer to Jesus. Off, off topic. Someone's asking if there's going to be baptism in April. Uh, I think Elaine said no. Okay. It's just Tyler. I don't think uh, we don't have an elder coming. So there, that's a no. So no communion, no baptism. Okay. Where is Balim? Here we go. Yeah. She, verse 17 talks about the same Balim. I'm going to take the name of Balim out of her mouth. Master. That's so, See? but no, look at this. So Bali is a symbolic name of Jehovah, Bali. Balim, just, just one additional letter changed it to a Phoenician God. Yeah. Mm. That's why you have to check every single <laughs> word, eh? Literally Phoenician deity, Baal, Bali. No, That's so confusing. That's so confusing. Because if you weren't to use that, if you weren't to use and you were just saying these verses, how could you get, <laughs> you know what I mean? Because it seems so similar. For us, ours is a capital G and other gods are lowercase g. How, how hard is that? You know what I'm saying? Like if we're mm. to no, no, in, in these gods and false gods, we use a capital G. Right. Yeah, but in these two verses, it, seem, it seems like Bali and Bali could be, you know, never mind. I'm probably wrong. It's okay. Sorry. Well, even more confusing is like I, I'm on, I don't know how, what blue letter of Bible is using here, but under Baal, it has, says it equals Lord, but then ABC says, like you say, it says supreme male divinity of the Phoenicians or Canaanites or B, a Reubenite which makes it one of God's people. And then C says the son of Jehiel, the grandfather of Saul. <laughs> so there's like three completely different. Oh, and then D, a town of Simeon, probably identical to Baloth beer. So That's how do you we have to match the content of the sentence? Good point, yeah. Tony. Yeah. They all belong to the valley. How do you know they belong to the Valley of Acor? what they're saying. Okay. Verse 18, and in that day I will make a covenant for them with the beasts of the field and with the fowl of heaven and with the creeping things of the ground, and I will break the bow and the sword and the battle out of the earth and will make them to lie down safely. So isn't that like the, how do you call that? How do you call what? What do you mean? What, am I wrong? Did Parmenter mention before when it when it mentions in that day that it's talking about Sunday law? Depends. It does? Okay. Um, like in Joel 2. I don't know if it's in that day. Oh, well. <laughs> I it what's the difference? I just like Joel. That's how we started. <laughs> um, 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 this will be easier to find here. Uh, 
blow ye the trumpet in Zion and sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble for in the day of the Lord cometh. Okay, the day of the Lord is. I know the day of the Lord for sure is the Sunday law. Um, the day of the Lord is? Yeah. The great and terrible day of the Lord, the day of the Lord cometh. Yeah, for it is um, nigh at hand. A day of darkness and of gloominess, a day of clouds and of thick darkness, as the morning spread upon the mountains. A great people and a... Sh the, anyways, it goes into this whole description of this army. But this, well, this is just what we've always taught in the movement. And Parmenter has mentioned it before too, so I don't know if it's going to change, but it always seemed to be placed um, at the Sunday law, the day of the Lord. Because that's where basically to the whole world, the truth is made known about God, but it's also a day of darkness and gloominess and thick clouds because evil things are at work. And we all know that it's not going to be the majority of mankind on this planet that chooses God. It's going to be the minority of people. So the majority of the world is going to be in a huge chaos and mess. From what we've been seeing, because if you have papacy coming in at Sunday Law too, that would make it a, a dark day. Because papacy is back on the scene. And we haven't seen that in our lifetimes, the way it's going to be at Sunday Law. Mm. Which then brings you back to this, that it was the, the papacy and not um, Islam, which was an issue that we had with uh, not Tree of Life, Path of the Just, when we came into this movement. Anyways, add the Sunday Law to you, which is interesting. So you're, you're at that you have is the one that um, Parminder is recommending because some of the brethren in Africa have, um, a, although they have a King James Bible, it's like a 2000 version. And it doesn't have the italics. Yeah. And um, he was talking, you know, you uh, look at your Bibles to make sure they have the italics. And if not, then you'll have to get the app. And he was talking about, like, you have the King James Plus. Yeah. Yeah, he was talking. So what it is, is when you go into the software, this is eSword, King James is just the regular King James, and it'll actually have the italicized words also highlighted in gray here. So you could say it is, it's italicized, but it's also gray, and then the word is added. But then King James Version Plus is the one that has the words of Hebrew and the definitions by them. That's what the King James Plus version does, and you can parallel them. And also, I usually have the Septuagint here on the side because it's interesting. I don't know how to use that or how to apply it, but I've I've seen verses where the Septuagint, which is of supposedly the original, how it's written, is way different than what it ends up being here. So yeah. I don't know. He talks about that too. So what did he say about I don't remember how to set it up. Yeah, Tony, what did he say about the Septuagint? Because I don't remember. Um, I'm not. I just. I'm not quite sure on it. I know I just been typing it out, so it takes me a, a little while to. I'll have to redo some of it because I'm formatting. But I know he used that word. So yeah. I don't know yet. I mean, I don't remember. I but I will by the time I'm done with my. I think we have a video tutorial up on how to download eSword and how to. Set That's it. what I was thinking because I need to do that. I can uh, do a new one because they actually this is a new version. That one was a tutorial of the old version. This is a okay. New can you redo it then? Yeah. Oh, thank I'll, you. And I'll send it to you. Thank you. I think, I don't know if you know this, Adriana, too. I'm pretty sure that there's an Ellen White add on for eSword that you can actually add on the writings of Ellen White into there, too, as a, what do you call it, like a commentary or whatever? I don't know if it's in there. Like, I've, it might, well, I don't think it's only for Mac, but when I was trying to get eSword for Mac, I did find the, the Ellen White add on. But it wasn't on the actual app itself. You had to go online and download the the add-on because it's coming from a private or not a private, but like an independent producer or whatever. Gotcha. Look how quick you are. I'd still be on repairs of the breach. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't even know where to begin. Yeah, I get mixed up, but they made it a little bit easier now. But oh my goodness, there were times where I was all over trying to find something there. Having more of these tutorial type videos of how to do this type of stuff would be really beneficial. I know I would appreciate it. Yeah, they do have tutorials there. 
Um, and this is one of them, but she's going to update it. Yeah. Um, they're in separate videos. So Donna, we have tutorials on how to do transcribing. We have a tutorial on how to do public word, the publisher. Um, we have a tutorial on how to do eSword, a tutorial on how to do share screen in Zoom. We have- Is that, is that the ones that is al already in the, um, on the YouTube channel? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. I didn't see the one on the eSword. Um, I think that's on my website, um, but I think they're all on the website. Hold on. I think they're all on your website, on yours. That's where I'm getting them. I'm not getting them from Elaine's. Oh, maybe you think she put them together. I'm not it's sure. at the, they're at the top of the, um, I put, posted the links to them. At the, the, it is not titled, I think, at the top of the SAC Fellowship page on so they're all right here under oh, okay so sacramento fellowship okay and then under tutorials under the extras under the tutorials they're all here so you have video typing using google docs um how to install and use eSword, how to use OneNote. Can you, can you put that link in the boxer here so i can they're in they're in the email too i think donna i'm pretty sure i still have those links in the within the the bible study email that always goes out there's okay. those links in there all the time I think they're there. Not all of them. That's the thing. That this is I don't the, think I've seen this Sacramento. I don't know. I, you know, just, it's kind of confusing, but yeah. Yeah, well, that's the website that she did. Uh, you might. There's two different websites. And okay. mine has a Sac Fellowship page. Yeah, I don't think I've seen this website that she just had up. Yeah, that's hers. Yeah. Okay. She put it up. There's, there's your link. Okay, perfect. Thank you. So. Back to the verses again. I got a few questions or a few thoughts here, you know, that have been kind of been adding up here. Let's go for it. Um, yeah. okay. when we're taking a look at the word wilderness. I was just taking a look at that and it's defining it as a pasture. Okay. Uh, you know, primarily a place, you know, that is uninhabited. And um, so if it's a pasture, um, this is a place where a person can learn because also the other place where it talks about allure. What? The word allure in that verse. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and I will allure her and bring her into the wilderness. Mm -hmm. The word allure means primarily um, it's to be open-minded or to open, to be open. I don't think I checked that out in here. Hold on, let me see. Uh, no, she, yeah, she can go in. Hey, you. Okay, so to open, that is be causatively make roomy. And so when a person is open, you really are also, you're, being open also to the message. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Until you look at this, delude, deceive, enlarge, entice, flatter, persuade. I want to take this whole thing. It has double meanings. It could mean good or bad things. Hmm. Anything else? Um, yeah, I was, okay, I got to go back here again. And then um, I was probably, I'm maybe getting a little bit ahead of myself because I did go to verse 16 too, uh, when it's talking about Ishi and Bali. And between those two, we're actually taking a look at a contrast because Ishi is in reference to a man, which is in contrast to Bali, which was which is a divinity or deity, I should say. Master. Hmm. Master. Master. Yeah, so master versus husband. Um so you want, let's do this. Here was Ishii. Where, oh, okay. Um, 
person, deity, okay. And so having said that, when we go back to verse 14, um, we see here that um, it says, I will allure her and bring her into the wilderness. And the word speak comes into place right here. You know, speak yeah. comfortably unto her. Okay. Holy and so here, this is where you find a declaration, you know, a, a converse, a promise and things like that. Um, and then we find oh, yeah, a response. A conversation, huh? Yes, we find a response. And that response is in the singing. Because in verse 15, she shall sing. And yeah. the word sing is meaning to answer, to respond to, to testify as a witness. So it's where she's paying attention and begin to speak. I was expecting Elaine to bring that singing part out. <laughs> <laughs> she's driving, she can't think of everything. <laughs> I was, thinking wanting to, I was wanting to earlier, but I didn't when you guys said sing, because yeah, because there's, there, there's, yeah. you're singing, you're singing either the song of deliverance or you're, or you're singing prophecy, praise, and thanksgiving. Yeah, and I was thinking of you when we read that. I was waiting for you to say something. Well, I'm in and out when I'm driving, so I have to literally pick up the phone and try to turn my mic on, and there's cars around. I don't do that. <laughs> Dangerous. And and then the other point was this, is what is being given her? I mean, she sings upon receiving something. And it says, you know, when it's talking about giving her her vineyard, it's being very specific. It's not just any vineyard, it's her vineyard. It, that her is double, it's her vineyard. That's, That's what I was saying Christ before. We're talking about. This is Sally, it's, it's God, it's not it, her husband, the husband man. Those are good points, Henry. Yeah, those are good. And who's the her? This one, this one was really interesting that it's a testify because at the Sunday law, you would testify if that's what this was. You have a testimony you bear to the world. God gave you something or talked because he were, it's a conversation. He, he spoke comfortably to you. So he gave you a message, right? And then you go sing it to the world. Now, according to the Strong's definition for this, you know, when we're talking about vineyard, another word for that is also garden. Oh, the beautiful garden. So, so we're actually general. putting it right into a, an agricultural scale again. Garden. Yeah, we were looking at that for agricultural scale, so, but that's why I put um, harvest here. So I don't know, because that, if you're going to put the agricultural model. Anyways. Was this a good study? We're not getting to chapter three anymore. No, we're going to, more next week. <laughs> yeah, th this, um, this is really putting our brains together and and god is opening up i think it's, I think it's blessing us it's yeah it's been pretty yeah good. I, probably the next one is going to be much easier yeah you know what uh, i mean i was always kind of really stumped by this stuff but i i can't honestly tell you today i'm actually understanding it <laughs> yeah. like wow it's interesting how all together we uh, we were able to put it on the line yes and also too there's no distractions i come with a clear head it's always good to do that everyone's phone is away hopefully and <laughs> yeah it's really exciting elaine says persevere to the end <laughs> is she texting and driving now elaine <laughs> no that's just what she always says but i hope not she wouldn't do I that i don't think so she's not in the chat saying that yeah no it's just that what she says yeah. No, but I'm pulling in my driveway, so I have to disconnect. So. Okay. <laughs> God bless you guys. Thank you. God bless. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Sure. Until the next time. Huh?
Yeah, so mom, up to you again next time. <laughs> so do we get pictures of this which you've been drawing up? In, um, in yeah, the I didn't do it for last time because I totally forgot, but I will do that. I will put this in the notes and then. Um, okay, good. You want to check it out? I'll add this as well. Okay. Uh, you'll probably, I wasn't very careful about putting where I, we got each idea from, so you'll probably have to. Um, well, it's not very fine. Right. Well, we're going to come back next week and continue. I, in my opinion, I think it's pretty good. Yeah, looks like Christine did record this. <laughs> <laughs> So we're good. You can backtrack and figure out how we got all these. Oh, okay, cool, cool, cool. <laughs> Anyways, we're up for time and we're gonna skedaddle before our braid's built. Anyways, this was really fun. I always like these ones. And I like if you guys let me doodle them because it keeps me interactive. Otherwise I just nod off or something. I just can't, it's hard to say to pay attention. I like being interactive about, which I love about our movement, the fact that it requires all of us to doodle on whiteboards. Do you know how amazing that is for people to just stay awake instead of sitting in a pew for a long term and doing nothing? You know, um, when we were in the, in the conference, you know, we have the, the regular Sabbath school in the morning, you know, 10 mm -hmm. o'clock till 1045 around there. And then we have, you know, the gathering together of, uh, you know, the worship service for 30 to 45 minutes. And at 12 o'clock, pretty much 12, you know, people are looking at their watch thinking when this is going to be over. <laughs> And, and then, you know, and then we have this so-called lay activity where you lay around for the rest of the day and do nothing. <laughs> lay activity. Right. <laughs> but, but this, we find no boredom. I mean, this is, this is wonderful. Yeah. You know, there, there is no, what do we do next? What do we do for the rest of the Sabbath? You know, we can't wait till the sun goes down because now we can do other things. You know, there is no thought of that because this is all about uh, worshiping God and there's, we're ever learning. Our, our knowledge is increasing. We're fellowshipping. We're thinking alike and we're bringing things to the table together. So this is wonderful. Thank you. It makes everything easier. Like keeping the Sabbath is way easier than it ever was because you're like, wow, I, I can't wait to have a whole day where I have no distractions to pay attention to our message completely. It's all we want all week long. We're like so sick of work because we want to just watch videos and learn stuff. And so we yeah. have a true appreciation of the Sabbath the way we were always supposed to. Right. Now I understand what, when God said, you know, make my Sabbath a delight. That <laughs> This yeah. is it. Yeah, yeah, it is. And it is a delight. It's wonderful. Love it. I, I, I agree, Phil. Totally. Yeah. yeah. And it's like, what are you going to do after sunset anyways? You're just going to watch more videos. And keep doing it. <laughs> <laughs> it just doesn't even, sometimes it all starts to blend because this is all I do when I'm not at work. This is it. Like what else, you know, what else do you need? What else this do you want? Is life. This is life. So anyways, Phil, do you want to close us off in prayer? Um, hold on. Is tomorrow you guys is daylight savings? Yes. Yes, daylight okay. savings. So our our head tonight before you go to bed. Well, I'll be no. I, I we don't have daylight savings here, so now we'll be together again. Oh, yeah. okay, good. Oh okay. wow, that's that's Arizona interesting. Don't do that. Oh wow, that's blamers. interesting. Okay. Right, let, let us pray. Our wonderful loving Father, Almighty God, we. Um, we're so blessed and uh, we, we are grateful that you have mercy upon us and you bless us with a, a glimpse of knowledge each time we study, each time we pick up your word, each time we fellowship, each time we study. You, know, you, you reveal to us about yourself and we know we're going to be doing this forever because, Lord, you're an infinite God 
and uh, we're going to be learning about you, heaven, the things of heaven, the nature of God for the rest of all eternity. And we have begun. And uh, this is wonderful, Lord, that uh, you are revealing yourself to us. So thank you, Lord, for the love you have for us. And you are, you are so gracious and merciful. So thank you. And uh, thank you for the, the lessons that we had today, the fellowship that we had among the fellow believers. And um, so thank you. Uh, we, what else can we say, Lord, but to thank you for this is your work. And uh, we're just so blessed to be equally yoked with you to participate in the work that, that you have for us, for, for the world, for the church. And uh, we thank you. And so as we part company now, Lord, um, we ask that, that your, your Holy Spirit will continue to give us wisdom, that we shall indeed continue to find delight in your word, so that even though the Sabbath might be over in another hour, hour and a half or so, that uh, our delight will still be in your word, where we can continue to be blessed by your truth, your gem. So thank you, Lord. And uh, we ask, Lord, as we continue to learn, that you'll continue to protect us from the evil one, protect us from lies, uh, protect us from deceit, uh, for your admonition before you left, uh, before you left on this word, world, you said, do not be deceived. Do not be deceived. So we pray, Lord, that we shall not be deceived and we'll delight in your word always. Protect us, O oh God. And all this we pray in the name of our God, our Lord and Savior, Yeshua. Amen. 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 Beautiful. Everybody, Amen. good night all. Happy Sabbath, everybody. Happy, Happy Sabbath. Sabbath. Good we'll night. See you. We'll see you.